My childhood was um, a bit crazy. I grew up um, in Colorado, then moved to Southern California and found that I was a bit odd and that I didn't have the beach look and um, had to make myself feel that I fit in in some way and um, became very involved with drama and theater. And it helped me to build a persona that could be accepted among my friends that lived in this Orange County, you know, environment. And um, it helped though, because I learned how to be adaptable and resilient. And uh, I feel like as hard as it was to grow up being kind of odd, it really helped me down the road in becoming aware of how what I did, what I said impacted others, and to be empathetic with others who are also feeling like they're a bit odd. And I could help them because I knew the feeling. I knew what it was like. One of the things that actually uh influenced me significantly to go going medicine was my father had a kidney transplant uh, when I was a child. And to me, it was fascinating that one can get organ from someone who's deceased and helps save lives with others. And that made a significant impression on me. And that's how my interest started in medicine. So. I've been diagnosed four times with cancer. I was 40 years old the first time I was diagnosed with cancer, and that was a carcinoid tumor. And then seven years later, um, I found a lump and went in, and it was breast cancer. It didn't require um, anything other than um, a lumpectomy. And then I was able to, to do chemo and radiation. But seven years later, I found a bit of an inconsistency in my breast tissue. Cancer was there, but it hadn't returned. It was an entirely different diagnosis of breast cancer. I didn't even require chemo the second time I had breast cancer surgery, but um, had a lumpectomy and felt like, good, now I'm done. And then seven years later, um, through a needle biopsy, they diagnosed it, that I had breast cancer. And again, it was a different, entirely different kind of breast cancer. But the surgeon said, Cindy, this is the third time you really need to be thinking about having a mastectomy. When I saw her first, it was a, it was a difficult time in her life being diagnosed with breast cancer and going through multiple operations. Cindy had a history of radiation to the chest, and as a result, uh, the risk of implant reconstruction was high uh, for complications. And as a result, we performed DFLAB breast reconstruction. There are many ways uh, to perform breast reconstruction, specifically to replace volume. Uh, we use either implant or we can use autologous tissue or our own tissue to reconstruct the breast. And when implant reconstruction is difficult or is not preferred, then we use autologous tissue. Now, we can use autologous tissue or our own tissue to reconstruct the breast either as a pedicle flap, a flap that is close by where we can rotate and reconstruct the breast, or we use tissues that are more distant DIEP flap, which stands for Deep Inferior Epigastric Artery Perforator Flap, involves using lower abdominal tissue to reconstruct the breast using microvascular surgery. Essentially, we perform a excision of lower abdominal tissue and preserve the artery in the veins and move the tissues onto the chest where there is mastectomy defect and reconnect the artery and vein uh, and perform the anastomosis using microscope, which is why it's called microvascular surgery. This procedure is much longer than implant reconstruction and a longer initial hospital stay, but long-term outcome is excellent. Here I was able to survive cancer for the fourth time, and it touched me so much that I really wanted to do something to make the world a better place. Well, I signed up to be a volunteer with a women's microloan group in Africa. These are the mamas that I worked with when I went to Africa. They're just beautiful women working so hard to build a small business in order to earn enough money for 
farm supplies for school fees, medical care for their families. So we got very, very close. After recovering, I had these drains that were attached to my body that were amazingly inconvenient and embarrassing and awkward. I decided in that recovery area that I was gonna come up with a solution that would help other people. And so I thought if I could create something that was made out of mesh that would allow the patient to actually wear it when they go into the shower and it would hold it underneath a shirt or a top so no one would even know that you had them. I still had this wonderful memory of the women in Africa. They live at the base of Kilimanjaro and the locals called Kilimanjaro Kili and so I thought I'd like to honor them by naming this pouch the Keeley Drain Carrier. They said, we'd love to make something out of our fabrics that will cheer up the patient, that will make patient feel beautiful. And so we went out and chose these beautiful fabrics and came back and made it into these awesome aprons that can be used for a variety of reasons. Our patients really liked the product and, and they felt they really it really helped them in many ways. She uh, proceeded it with mass producing it and getting a patent on it, which she continues to send to patients uh, uh, for free sometimes when they can't afford it. It's a wonderful, rich sisterhood of women who have breast cancer, and almost all of them are willing to help others come through this experience. Turn around and be there for others. I was actually healed by helping others, and I think others will feel that too.